The scripture this morning is from Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 4. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored. I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these words and I thank you for the reminder that you are always here for us and um, we have you to look for us to look to. We have you to protect us and um, we have your word to remind us in these promises that you give us that you are here for us. Um, I pray for uh, Nick today and um, as he's speaking, and I pray for uh, our Enclave community here to keep our eyes and ears um, and minds and hearts open to the words that we're hearing today. And I thank you for this day, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Today, I'm going to do my best to lead us in a practice called Lectio Divina. Um, now, when I first heard someone introduce Lectio Divina, I thought, man, that's a Latin word. This guy must have his spiritual life like in perfect order. I should really listen carefully to what he has to say, because that's fancy. Um, now, I share that with you because I want to manage expectations. You should be very excited but not because of me or anything I'm going to say, uh, but because the Lord has sent his spirit to talk with you today. Uh, listen to the spirit of the Lord. Also, I have a, a request. If you hear anything really helpful from someone who has their life all put together, go ahead and share that with me because I need all the help I can get, and uh, I'll appreciate that. Uh, so Lectio Divina means divine reading which uh, doesn't really take away from the impression that I'm about to do something really special. But again, I'm not. Uh, anything that special happens from the Holy Spirit, listen to that. Uh, I am going to do Lectio Homo, or human reading, and uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes it divine. I'm going to read this passage, the same one John had just read. I'm going to read it three more times. And on the first reading, I'll ask you to listen to the words and just kind of remember the arc of the passage. And then on the second reading... Uh, I'll encourage you to close your eyes and try to imagine that you are an observer of the action of the, of the, and then just picture what's going on in your mind, right? And then in the third reading, I'll ask you to imagine that you are a participant in the story. You have to pick your own participant from, from uh, what I'm reading, and then you can uh, imagine yourself being that person, right? You could choose uh, to be the person who's uh, being spoken to. You could choose to be Isaiah. You could even choose to be God. You know, that's allowed. It's not going to diminish or tarnish the divinity of God at all for you to imagine yourself speaking these words. Um, and then finally, I'm going to ask everyone to spend like a minute or two sharing kind of about that experience with someone near you, okay? Uh, but I won't make anybody report to the group at large. Don't worry. All right. Uh, just uh, in case you haven't done this kind of thing before, I'll give you these tips also. Uh, try to be comfortable, you know, uh, put your phone down. You don't have to read it in your Bible. I'll read it. You'll hear it enough. And then um, take a deep breath and we'll get started. Okay, so this is Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. 
When you go through rivers of difficult of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. All right, on the second reading, imagine that you're an observer outside of the action but able to fully witness it. All right? So I'll just read the same thing again. Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. All right, I'm going to read it one more time. And this time, choose a perspective from within the, within the passage. And just imagine that you're, uh, you're right there in the middle of it. All right? This is Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored, and I love you. All right, thank you for humoring me. I'm going to pause for a minute, just let you think about that. Uh, it is likely that some of you have just been a little bored for a couple of minutes. Uh, maybe a couple of you have had a pleasant nap. You're welcome. That might be the best blessing I could give you this morning. Um, and uh, I just want to say honesty is really valuable. So as you, uh, as you're, I'm about to ask you to share with someone near you, remember that there's no pressure for this experience to have been anything more than what it was. All right? It just if it was what it was. Maybe, like me, you were a little distracted by whatever. You know, maybe uh, my shirt button wasn't buttoned. That was really distracting for me. Thank you for tolerating my buttoning my button. Um, so, all right, take a minute or two and uh, talk with someone near you and just share uh, how that felt for you, and then I'll let you know when two minutes have passed and you can swift, switch and the other person can share. All right, go. It's not turned on. Okay, we're safe. Um, so, uh, who did you imagine yourself being? Right now, all I can see is the face of God. Yeah. Mm. And 
that's what I felt. Yeah. Mm. I'm still going through. Yeah. And I know it's true. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. By my side and help me get through the day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm going to let everybody know it's been two minutes. All right, it's been two minutes. If, you, uh, if you're the first person to go, go ahead and wrap it up and let the other person have a turn. Um, thank you for sharing that. I know that's... Um, sometimes, um, you know, I wish that the Lord would have said, don't worry, you don't have to go through the fire or the, or the floods, right? Letting go is hard, isn't it? I mean, like, I've been in back and forth for a while. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a good week like that. Yeah. The only thing that's really been crazy is I had a tournament and got in with the county. Mm -hmm. They put in and mm -hmm. they put me through the whole thing. And I think people were just in fear. Mm -hmm. So it was like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Yvonne. All right. Thank you, everybody. Some of you, uh, like me, might have a hard time hearing this passage. What the heck, Lord? Almost drowning and burning, but not being burned up. That's not cool, right? What kind of blessing is that? <laughs> um. You know, maybe, maybe uh, honestly, my, my biggest struggle is the part where God says that I'm his, you know, that I'm precious to him, um, that I'm honored and that he loves me. Um, I, just, I just can't seem a lot of the time to reconcile the Lord's words with the feelings that dominate my heart so often. The accuser is relentless, and I give him plenty of material uh, to work with, you know, um, he says that God doesn't think I'm precious, and you know that he'll only love me once I get my act together. And let's face it, that ain't never going to happen, right? The, the devil has really bad grammar. Uh, I've listened to the voice of shame, my accuser, most of my life, and it's driven me to try to be better, right? Um, it's told me that I'm not enough, and I have, for the most part, believed. Uh, I still believe a lot of the time. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, the serpent whispered to Eve. He said, uh, does God really love you? And suddenly, Eve didn't feel safe anymore. Right? Uh, this lie is at the center of all the stuff we talk about here in church. Um, Andrew spent more than a month a little while ago talking about the difference between the Jesus and the Pharisees, right? During the, the Holy Week and how the Pharisees, they, they really acted out their belief in this lie that, that God doesn't love them, right? Their insecurity uh, drove them to act the way they did. Um, today, I want us to listen to the Lord who created us. Right? You've heard your whole life from the accuser, uh, but the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. Uh, I've called you by name, you are mine. 
God didn't use such intimate and personal language because he was talking only to the collective group of Israel, right? He wouldn't, he wouldn't have said all these very, very individual terms. You know, I try to be careful when reading Scripture because as an American, I see everything from an individual perspective, right? And a lot of Scripture isn't written to an individual. It's written to a group. Um, but in this case, the Lord seems to have selected very, um, very personal and intimate words. Um, nevertheless, um, I find it really hard to believe. I, I read this verse three times a day, every day, um, and it's made a big impact uh, in my life, but, but I still struggle to believe. Um, you know, I think maybe, uh, maybe there's some kind of mistake. Maybe I've taken this verse out of context Maybe um, it really, it only applies to the nation of Israel while they're in exile. It doesn't really apply to me. But, uh, but the truth is that this theme is pretty consistent throughout Scripture, right? So Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, just in case you're wondering, nothing in all creation is not meant to point you to something outside of creation that can separate us from the love of Christ. It was a you know, blanket statement. Nothing. Right? Uh, Maybe we can think about the woman at the well. We haven't thought about that in a while, right? Um, she had been listening to the, the accuser's voice, the voice of shame, for a long time. And when Jesus says to her, if, only, uh, if you only knew the gift of, that God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. She doesn't believe Jesus at first, right? Uh, until after he has demonstrated that he knows her shame, and the offer still stands, right? That's when, that's when she starts to listen, maybe, to what Jesus is saying. Um, all right, my, my personal favorite is kind of a long story, and so uh, bear with me. Uh, Andrew preached on 1 Samuel, like, I don't know, three or four years ago, and it had a, a pretty big impact on me. And um, in 1 Samuel 27.1, David says to himself in his own heart, he says, Now I shall perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will despair of seeking me any longer within the borders of Israel, and I shall escape out of his hand. Uh, this is the beginning of a very dark period for David. Right? He spends the next 16 months uh, attached to a Philippine, uh, Philistine king. He lies, he hides, he murders, and he pillages for 16 months. At the end of this time, uh, the lying and the hiding are about to end uh, because David chooses to fully commit himself to his life as a Philistine. And um, I don't think of David that way usually in the Bible, but, but there he is. The Bible is clear. At the end of, of uh, chapter 27, at the beginning of chapter 28, actually, he says, all right, let's go. No more lying and hiding. I'll go with you, King Asich. We'll go, we'll go kill the Hebrews together, right? Well, so that's the, the setting for this next super bizarre story, right? Saul goes uh, right, right immediately after David makes that commitment to King Asich. Saul goes and visits this medium in order to consult with the spirit of the now dead prophet Samuel. And Samuel, you know, and, and Saul have this conversation, and the, the meat of it, uh, Saul says, the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. This didn't come like after David had repented. It comes right there at the at the darkest and lowest point for David when he is, when he is uh, well, I guess it gets a little darker and lower right after that, but uh, 
It's pretty low, right? It's, it's pretty much as, as bad as it's been for David up until this point in his life. And the Lord says, David's still my man, right? And he doesn't say it just to David. He says it to Saul, his enemy, right? And, uh, and he says it to us, right? And incidentally, so, uh, Samuel also tells Saul, who's been a pretty wicked king up to this point, he says, tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. You know, I don't know 100% what that means, but uh, you can explore it if you want. It's in 1 Samuel 28. Um, this sentiment that we find here in Isaiah 43, 1 through 4, it's found in just about every story of the Bible. Uh, so I'm going to read it one more time, and then I'll, I'll be all done. So thank you. Um, Isaiah 43, 1 says, But now listen to the Lord who created you, the one who formed you. I'm going to supplement this just a little bit with my commentary. The one who formed you, the one with the authority to give the final word says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I already know who you are and what you have done, and I've made provisions for that. I have called you by name. You are mine. I chose you especially because I made you just the way I wanted to on purpose. And now I am calling you by the name that I gave you before you sinned. You are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. And when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. So life, life is hard, right? You might even say life sucks sometimes. And it's going to keep on sucking sometimes, right? But, but God promises that he is with us in the midst of that. Not, not at the end of it, but right in the middle of it. Uh, and he promises that he will accomplish his purpose in those times, right? Um, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. You are so valuable to me that I paid a heavy price to get you back, Right? Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. This is what God says to us, right? Um, yeah, I just, I've enjoyed hearing from the Lord. Uh, thank you.